Okay, so in this video I'm going to take a look at friction and also look at uh, applying it to some problems involving slopes. So I'm going to look at both of those topics. So the first thing we need to know about the friction that we're going to be dealing with is in this topic is it's the friction that acts when two surfaces try and slide over each other. So if you're sliding something across the desk, that's the kind of friction we're talking about. We're not looking at the fr frictional force from air resistance, for instance, in this topic. So to calculate the maximum possible frictional force between two surfaces, you multiply the coefficient of friction between those two surfaces, and there's like reference books and stuff, so you can look that up. That's not something you need to like experimentally find out or anything. And you multiply that by the normal contact force between the two, and that's where dealing with slopes makes it a little bit tricky because they change the normal contact force. So this is the expression here, so F max is mu, which is the coefficient of friction symbol, and then R, which is the normal contact force symbol. So if an object's moving, the frictional force will be the F max value, no question asked. No difficult situations, that's just it. If the object is stationary, however, the frictional force could be anywhere between zero and the F max, depending on any other forces acting on the object, and I'll show you some examples where we see that in action. The other thing is the coefficient of friction is always a value between zero and one. If you see anything else, it's not correct. It has to be between zero and one. Okay, so let's look at some problems putting friction into action. So we've got a desk, which we're going to assume is horizontal in this example, and we've got a 2 kilogram box sitting on it, and we've got a coefficient of friction of 0.25. And we're going to look at calculating the frictional force in these three different scenarios down here. So first scenario, there's no other forces acting on it, so let's think about it. We know it's got its weight force acting down, that always has to be there, gravity doesn't just go away, but it's got no other force acting on it. So if we're assuming that this is horizontal, if the weight force is vertical, it's going to have no effect horizontally. So there's no resultant force, if you like, acting or no driving force acting on it. So if there's no other forces, the frictional force must be zero newtons because it's the object isn't moving. If friction was, say, like one newton, that would make the box move, and friction can't cause something to move. It can only restrict the motion of an object. It can't actually have an effect on it just by itself. It's always acting to oppose other forces. Okay, so in this scenario, the friction is just zero newtons. Next one. What if a 3 newton force acts to the right? So if we look at this here, so we've got the W, which we know is not going to have an impact in this case, and we've got 3 newtons to the right. So first of all, let's have a look at what our maximum possible value of friction is. So we've got the mu R, and so mu is 0.25 and your R is just mg because it's horizontal so we've got 2 kilograms times 9.8 and that gives us a value of 4.9 newtons there, so that's the friction that's going to be acting, well sorry, that's the maximum possible friction that could act on it, but like I said, frictional force can't cause an object to move, and currently if this frictional force is applied, it actually caused the object to move to the left, so you, if the object's not moving, the friction must be just directly opposing the driving force of 3 newtons, so the friction must in this case be 3 newtons, so it's not quite the limiting case yet. Let's look at the third example. So we've got a 5 newton force acting to the right. So we've got our 5 newtons again, we've got our W. And we remember if we go from our previous problem, 0.9 newtons. So given that 
the driving force is now greater than the friction force, this object is going to start to move. And as I said earlier, if it's moving, the friction will be this maximum value. So the friction in this case is going to be the maximum value, and it's going to be 4.9 newtons. It can't be possibly be greater than that, so it's actually going to start to move. Okay. So let's introduce a slope. So before we introduce friction, let's just do a simple slope problem where we're not thinking about friction. So we've got a four kilogram box on a slope and it's at 30 degrees. We want to know the acceleration. So we're going to calculate the acceleration. We need to know what the resultant force is and then we're going to use Newton's second law. So when you're dealing with slopes, normally we would resolve vertically and horizontally. But what we're actually going to do is resolve both parallel and perpendicular to the slope. Now, because we're not worrying about friction, we don't need to worry about doing perpendicular. So we're just going to resolve parallel to the slope, and that's the shorthand notation for doing that. So the force is going to come from the weight force, so it's going to be mg, and then it's going to be the component. So if you think that the weight force is acting that way, you want the component that way, so it's going to be sine of 30, because effectively we're using this angle here, which would be 90 minus 30, or sine of 30. So there, so we've got 4 times 9.8 times 0.5, that's the sine of 30, I haven't just randomly changed the numbers. And if we plug that in, we should get 19.6 newtons. So that's the resultant force acting down the slope. Now to get the acceleration from that, so we take the resultant force, divide it by the mass by 4, and you end up with 4.9 meters per second minus 2. Now, some of the more eagle-eyed and runs you might have spotted that here we multiply by 4, or the, the mass, and then we divide it again afterwards. So you can do this in one step and just cross out the m's in both cases. So you can shorten it a little bit, but I just want to explain where it came from. So let's introduce some friction into this problem. There's the work solution before we do that. So now we've got some friction. So let's draw a diagram, seeing as we haven't got one. So we've got a slope, and we know it's 45 degrees, and we've got another 4 kilogram block. And we've currently got a weight force acting like that. So we're going to deal with friction. We need to know what the normal contact force is between the block and the slope. So in order to do that, we're going to need to resolve perpendicular to the slope, so that would be sort of like that angle. So to get the normal contact force, it's going to be mg cosine of 45, which is 4 times 9.8 times by um, 0 0.707 which comes out at 27.7, blah, 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 blah. So we can get the maximum friction is, and that's going to be that's like 5.43. Again, I'm not going to round these just yet because I'm going to use them in later solutions. So now, if I want to find the acceleration, I need to resolve parallel to the slope. So the resultant force is going to be the force down the slope, which is that one. And then you're going to subtract from that this F max value, so that's going to be 27. 0.7, by just the highlighted case, 
sine of 45 and cosine of 45 end up being the same number, so that's why we get the same number there. And I'm going to minus the 5.43, blah, 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 blah. And you end up with 22.174 newtons. So then to get our acceleration, just use Newton's second law. Divide by the mass, which was 4. And we end up with 5.54 meters per second to the minus 2. And that would be your acceleration down the slope. So by increasing the angle, even though we've introduced friction, this is actually accelerating faster than the previous problem, which is fun. Okay, there is the worked solution for that out nice and neat. So you can have a look at that if you missed anything. And that's going to be the end of this video. If you didn't understand some of the parts that are going on, I would highly recommend looking at the video I've made about resolving forces if you didn't understand how that was going on and looking at the Newton's laws if you didn't understand where the F equals MA came from.